In 1997, Zambia witnessed a daring but ultimately unsuccessful coup attempt that sent shockwaves through the nation and captured the world's attention. In a daring bid to seize power, a lone Zambian individual embarked on a coup that would last a mere three hours, silencing the country and leaving everyone worried about the consequences. The coup was led by a former Zambian army captain known as Captain Solo, whose real name was Stephen Lungu. This audacious attempt to overthrow the sitting president held the nation in suspense and, remarkably, included a demand for payment for the brief time he claimed to have ruled the country. The questions we can ask are, was this a planned coup? Did this soldier plan this coup alone? Who sponsored his operation? Join me as I reveal what happened that day. Here is a detailed report of the events that transpired during this audacious coup. The Daring Coup, October 28, 1997. On the fateful day of October 28, 1997, Captain Solo organized and led a group of soldiers in an attempt to overthrow the sitting president of Zambia, Frederick Chaluba. Solo and his soldiers broke into an arms depot, overpowered the guards, and seized ammunition, guns, and vehicles for their operation. They then headed to the Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, ZNBC, studios, where they took control of the state-owned broadcasting station. Solo declared himself as the representative of the National Redemption Council and announced the coup over state radio. He demanded that President Chaluba surrender by 9 a.m. or face dire consequences. This audacious act left the Zambian people in a state of fear and disbelief, while news of the coup spread rapidly worldwide. But who was Captain Solo? His real name was Stephen Lungu, who was known as Captain Solo. He was born on January 6, 1962, in Mansa, Zambia. Captain Solo was a former Zambian army captain whose growing discontent with President Frederick Chiluba's government led him down a path of drastic action. Captains are typically second in command of a subunit of up to 120 soldiers. They play a crucial role in the planning and decision-making process within tactical level units, with responsibilities that encompass operations on the ground, equipment maintenance, logistical support, and manpower. Therefore, Captain Solo had a sufficient number of personnel to execute this coup operation. If you are enjoying this story, make sure to click that subscribe button right now. By subscribing, you become an official member of our fantastic community. You won't want to miss a single chapter of this epic tale. Operation Born Again? In an unexpected twist, Captain Solo claimed to have received divine guidance for his mission and referred to the coup as Operation Born Again. He even expressed his intention to form a cabinet of military officers. However, it was evident that some of the soldiers involved in the coup were intoxicated as their messages and actions were incoherent. This led to the coup being dubbed the Drunken Coup, the failed coup. Shortly after Captain Solo's broadcast, gunshots echoed across the nation as the coup unfolded. However, by 9 a.m., another military commander announced on a different station that the coup had been successfully thwarted. A state of emergency was declared, and the government reported that the coup had lasted a mere three hours, with several military officers arrested. Fortunately, the coup ended without any loss of life. The Aftermath The coup attempt had significant repercussions. Former President Kenneth Kaunda condemned the coup and refused to recognize President Chaluba's government. Opposition parties called for dialogue to address the deep-seated discontent within Zambia. Surprisingly, President Chiluba emerged from the coup attempt with increased confidence and support as many sectors of society condemned the coup as an attempt to unseat him. Captain Solo's fate. Captain Solo, along with others involved in the coup, was initially sentenced to death for their roles. These sentences were later commuted to long prison terms. In 2003, under President Levi Mwanawasa, they were found guilty of treason by the high court and sentenced to death by hanging, although they immediately appealed, claiming they had unintentionally become embroiled in the coup. During the trial, Captain Solo confessed to masterminding the coup plot 
and asked for forgiveness while maintaining that his actions were justified due to the alleged corruption within President Chaluba's government. A presidential pardon. After serving 13 years in prison and enduring a commuted death sentence, Captain Solo received a presidential pardon from President Rupia Banda on December 28, 2010. However, his freedom came with economic challenges, relying on the support of a certain pastor for shelter, food, and clothing. The drunken coup in Zambia, led by Captain Solo in 1997, left a profound impact on the nation and sent shockwaves throughout Africa. It exposed the vulnerabilities in political systems on the continent where even bizarre and seemingly illogical attempts at seizing power could not be ignored. This event was a stark reminder of the deep-seated discontent within Zambia fueled by allegations of corruption, mismanagement, and widespread poverty. Impact and Lessons the drunken coup in Zambia in 1997 left a lasting impact on the nation and sent shockwaves throughout Africa. It highlighted the deep-seated discontent within Zambia fueled by allegations of corruption, mismanagement, and widespread poverty. The event underscored the importance of addressing the root causes of political instability and the need for good governance and transparency in African governments to prevent future coup attempts. Recent coup attempts in other African countries, like Gabon and Niger, further emphasize the ongoing challenges faced by the continent. Coup attempts disrupt democracy, stability, and trust in institutions, making it crucial for African nations and the international community to address the underlying issues driving political discontent. Coming to the questions we asked earlier, was this a planned coup? Yes, it was a well-organized and planned coup, but it was poorly executed due to intoxication because there were no rumors about a coup attempt. Did this soldier plan this coup alone? A few members of the public were caught, along with Captain Solo and the other captain. They were tried by the Zambian court, but it is not clear whether they were acquitted or sentenced to jail. In addition, 44 out of 54 soldiers were found guilty of treason and are still serving prison sentences in Zambian prisons. Who sponsored his operation? Captain Solo used government machinery to carry out this coup attempt and there was no foreign involvement reported. This was an internal matter. In conclusion, this intriguing episode in Zambia's history serves as a stark reminder of the power of conviction, the complexities of political unrest, and the need to address the issues that lead to coup attempts. By doing so, African nations can ensure that their democratic progress remains on a stable course and that such audacious and bizarre attempts at seizing power remain in the past. Do not be like Captain Solo support this channel by liking, subscribing, and hit that notification bell for more captivating historical tales. Thank you for joining us in exploring this intriguing episode of Zambia's past.